Welcome to the Morally End. My name is Mark Machado. Uh, we're joined by former Sri Lanka analyst Prad Navaratnam. And we've got the professor of cricketology, uh, Dominic Machado, my cousin over in America. And we're joined by our very special guest for at least the, the first chunk of this show. That's Matt Kabir Floyd, who will be part of the broadcast team for this series that we're going to preview today, Sri Lanka versus India. Jay Shah has done Sri Lanka cricket a massive favour and sent the boys over to play us in our kind of, I want to say our hour of need or post-World Cup to kind of lift us out of this slump. Uh, Matt, firstly, thanks for joining us on the Murley end. Before we get into it, though, I've got to remind anyone watching on Facebook or on YouTube or listening on your podcast, hit that subscribe button, leave us some likes, tell us your comments, tell us what your predictions are for this series. Even if it's just pain, um, then I want, I, want to, I want to read about that as well. Right, Matt, welcome to Murley End. Um, I'm going to start off with kind of what's been your experiences, because I know you've worked in Sri Lanka a few times now. What's been your kind of general experiences of Sri Lanka? What are you looking forward to when you get back over there? Uh, hi guys, pleasure to be on. Thanks for inviting me. Um, I love Sri Lanka. I mean, my mum's half Indian. She's from Tamil Nadu anyway, so I'm used to South India. Um, been there many times. In fact, we used to stop in Colombo on the way to Trivandrum every Christmas when we would go there because I think in the old days you couldn't get a direct flight. So we'd always stop in Colombo for a night. So I've, I've technically been to Sri Lanka loads of times, but <laughs> that was often for just one night. Uh, and the first time I went and worked there was 20... When was the T20 World Cup? Was it 2014, 2012? 2012. 2014? Yeah. Right, 2012. That was my first time working there. I had a brilliant time. Uh, I was reporting for Sky there, following the England team around. Um, and that was, of course, the West Indies, Sri Lanka final. West Indies yeah. winning it, Gangnam style. It was a really fun tournament, despite a bit of rain. Uh, so I really fondly remember that tournament. Uh, and then since then, I've done the LPL. I did one season of LPL, which I really enjoyed. It, it, it was during lockdown. It was towards the back end of COVID. So we were in a bubble, which was a bit, uh, uh, you know, not very fun. But we still had a great time. I really enjoyed the LPL, actually, because I got to know a lot of Sri Lankan domestic players that I wouldn't have got to know. You can only really get to know uh, players when you, when you go and work in the local T20 franchise tournament. Really, so that was a really eye-opening experience. You know, seeing like two bowlers who were ambidextrous in that tournament, Kamindu Mendis and I think Ratnayaka was the other one, which was incredible. You know, I've never seen that kind of thing before. I thought the standard was pretty good as well. There was a few English players. I think Phil Salt was there that year. Gobars was there. Uh, I really enjoyed that that LPL, even though we were under a semi-lockdown. So yeah, I love Sri Lanka. I love Sri Lankan food. I love Sri Lankan people. You know, it's, it's a bit more chilled out than India, isn't it? In a lot of ways, Sri Lanka, very fun-loving people, unique sounds and atmosphere in the stadium. So I can't wait to get back. Um, so we are talking about this India series that we're all very excited about. Matt, I'll come and get your kind of thoughts on what to expect from there. But I'll go, I'll go to Prad first. This has been quite a contentious squad. Obviously, there's a new captain, Asalanka. Um, Matthew, Angelo Matthews, everyone's favourite Sri Lankan uh, and uh, in no way controversial cricketer, is out of the squad. But uh, um, Chandimal is in and Kusil Jonath Pereira makes a return and there's a couple of other, or actually, well, there's a couple of other controversial decisions as well. We talked about the bowling decision not to take Madhushanka in the previous podcast we did. Um, Chimera has been replaced by Sita Fernando. Um, what do you make of this squad? What's your kind of take on it? Um, look, I think, uh, to, I'll be honest, I, I'm, I'm a little confused personally on, on the stuff because I'm not sure, you know, you know, I think we did a show a few, a few months ago where I said, we've got to start planning for the 2026 World Cup now. Um, so unless the selectors have got Chandamal, NKJP, um, in their plans for the 2026 World Cup, I, that's fine, no problems. Um, but if not, I think we probably missed a chance to maybe blood a couple of youngsters, give them a chance to kind of see what they've got. Um, you know, the likes of Chris Bullet. I know he didn't play the LPL, but he was all the rave last year. He doesn't get a chance this year. We, we don't know whether he's in form or not, right? Um, I think he just needs to be backed a little bit. Um, but it's a brave call by the selectors to go with these guys. And I think, you know, I think it's a matter of my personal view is if we're going to 
pick Chandamal, then he's got to be played in the position where he succeeded in the LPL. Because the only reason he's picked is because of his form at the LPL, where he opened the batting for Candy. Um, so you, I, I know the selectors came out today and they said, oh, they're looking at playing him and KJP at number three. And you can, because you don't want to mess up the Patham and Mendes opening partnership. That's fine. But then my, my advice would be, I, I would keep Chandamal as a backup opener, but keep him in the squad. Um, and I'd, I'd still play Kamindu at three. I, I wouldn't mess that around, really. We've just launched it. I would stay. It. And, and Kamindu is a great fielder, unbelievable electric electric on the field. And as you know, Matt mentioned it, he can bowl ambidextrous. So if we need a left-arm orthodox option, he's there for a matchup, right? Yeah, absolutely. Dom, what do you make of the, uh, the squad? Yeah, I have similar thoughts to Prad. Uh, bringing in... Chandamal and KJP in the first series you have after the, the World T20, right? And you're notionally preparing for a home World Cup, right? This is your chance to give young players um, a chance to succeed, to grow, to develop. Um, and this is one of the things to, to go back to the, the LPL, right? Um, Cruz Bollet was the emerging player of the year last year. Didn't play a single game. Siobhan Daniel, who everyone was talking about last year, played two games, right? These are young openers who should be being backed, who should be being supported, right? And, you know, you got to see what they have in advance of the next World Cup, right? Because you don't want to have to make a decision when they're 24, 25, and they've been showing good form, but they haven't played for the national team. What are you going to do? Whereas with Kusal Pereira, yes, he was in good neck, but we know who he is as a player. We're not going to find anything new. I doubt he's adding new shots. I didn't see any new shots in the LPL. Um, Chundamal, I agree, had a really good LPL, but I don't see why you want to slot him in at three. I don't think that's a role he um, has ever really played in his T20 career. Um, since 2016, he's been batting mostly as an opener. And I think they're making this mistake of putting in you know five or six guys who are really opening bats and saying, okay, let's juggle them around and put them in the lineup. And then you're in the position of having to choose one of Kamindu Mendes and Avishka Fernando for a number four spot. So two of the most promising batters who have a skill set for the T20 game, who you think, okay, you give them time, you let them develop, they can really become something. You now put them in competition with one another rather than lifting them up, right? And you've just played Kamindu at three, and now you're going to say, okay, let's bump you down and and play at four or you're not on the side right and he had a good lpl as well um we talked about dilshan madushanka as another um, person that's been left out i know benura fernando had a really really good lpl but dilshan madushanka has had a phenomenal record against india we know india tends to struggle against good left arm quicks and we've left out a 23 year old who topped the wicket charts in the 50 over world cup so that, to me, is also kind of um, unexplainable. Uh, uh, Matt, we, we, we're going to play India. I'm, I'm going to bring you in here as a bit of a kind of India expert. Um, it's, it's all changed for India, right? New captain, new coach. Obviously, they come in with, with the T20 trophy, or World Cup trophy, recently put into their uh, cabinet. What, what do you think India's strategy is for the kind of team that they've picked? Are they rebuilding for for the World Cup, or is this a bit of a victory lap and a, uh, for, for the for the team? No, it's definitely not a victory lap. I think they really are thinking about that T20 World Cup, which is in Sri Lanka and India. So it's a massive event for both of them. They'll be defending champions as well. It's going to be huge for India. So no Rohit, no Virat Kohli, no Jadeja. Three legends, really, particularly the top two of T20. So it, it, there's a real sense that this is a new beginning. This is the G20 team 2.0. They can revamp it slightly and they are going to do that. So I expect the top of the order, you're going to see a change in approach. You're going to see Jay Swal and Gill probably opening the batting. That's going to be a bit of a difference from Rohit and, and Kohli. We know that Jay Swal just goes after it mm. from ball one, pretty much super exciting. Gill will be a bit more measured he can probably pay bad at number three if you need him to as well. But I think he will open the batting. So you'll get a change at the top of the order. Surya Kumar as captain was a big surprise, I think. I think a lot of people thought it was going to be Hardik. 
He's captained, I think, about 16 or 17 T20 internationals for India. He was the vice captain for a long period of time. Then he left uh, Gujarat Titans, where he was very successful. He went to Mumbai Indians, got booed by his own fans, had a bit of a shocker as the captain in that season. And things have just kind of gone downhill for him since there, to the point where he's not even the vice captain on this series you know Gil is the vice captain so he looks like he is the captain do, elect. Do, do you think though that might have been a decision that he's made to kind of step away from being a vice captain or, or obviously we don't know but maybe told the, the new coach and stuff I don't want to be a captain I just want to focus when I'm playing for India just focus on playing for India because he came under a lot of pressure in the, in the IPL right yeah, he did. I mean, getting booed by your own fans is almost unheard of in India. They're a very positive fan base. It could have been that way. I, I think there are rumours that he might have said, I'm not available for the ODIs because he's not yeah. in the ODI squad. So he may have said, I don't want a leadership role. We don't know. We, we might find out in the next couple of weeks. But it was still a surprise. You know, I, I did a podcast with Azim Rafiq in the build-up to this. and We talked about India's T20 side. We talked about the captaincy options. We talked about punt. We talked about Hardik. We said, oh, they could even maybe bring in a Shreds Ayer or Kale Rahul back as a real left field selection. Mm -hmm. We didn't even talk about Surya Kumar that much because I didn't really think he was he was going to be the skipper. So that's a real statement of intent from Gautam Gambier, his first uh, series as head coach as well. So I think India are taking this series a lot more seriously, and you see that with the squads, both ODI and T20s, than they perhaps would have done if they didn't have a new captain and a new coach. So Gambia's come in and said, Rohit and Kohli, you have to play in the ODIs because this could easily have been a series that they would have missed in the past. But they've got a Champions Trophy coming up start of next year. So the, the build-up starts now. And then he's picked pretty much the strongest T20 squad available, barring Bumrah, who's rested, and Kuldeep, who's rested. He said he's going to rest the fast bowlers a little bit more. But apart from that, this is their strongest squad that they've got. So I think it's going to be really interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of eyes on how India play. You know, the, the new world champions in T20 cricket it took a long time for them to get their second crown. When you think about how dominant the IPL has been, it's taken this long. And I think in India, they now see it as a big opportunity to try and have a period of dominance. Because really, India in T20 cricket should be getting consistently to finals of the World Cups and consistently winning. So they've got a great chance to go back to back, haven't they? Home World Cup coming up. I think they're going to come at Sri Lanka with full force here and it could be exciting. You know, they've got some exciting young players. I, I can't wait to see even Bishnoi, you know, he gets a chance, a young leg spinner um, with no Chahal, no Kuldeep. He's the only wrist spinner in the squad, so a big chance for him. Aksha Patel gets a, an opportunity with Jadeja not there to, to be the Jadeja. So there's lots of new beginnings around. Do do you think there's many players in the Shrunker squad that strike fear in, into <laughs> Gotham Gambier and, and the rest of the India team? Or um, Yeah, I do. I, you know, I, listen, Sri Lanka's bowling attack, if you look at it on paper, is very good, right? For a T20 bowling attack, you've got unorthodoxy, You've got, I love Patirana. He's got real pace. Uh, I love Tushara when he gets it right as well. They're both bowlers that take a while to get used to. Uh, I, I agree. I, I was very surprised no Madhu Shankar because I, I remember him in the Asia Cup in Bangladesh. Yeah. He was brilliant in that competition. And every time I've seen him, actually, I've been very impressed with him. It's almost as if they've decided we want to have either Benura or Madhu Shankar. Mm -hmm. And they've gone for Benura, who I know had a good LPL. Um, but yeah, I, I would have had him in the squad. And then you've got a gun spin attack, right? Hasaranga and Tikshana. You, you know, there aren't that many spin combos around the world that are of that quality. So I think the bowling attack will worry India. The issue for Sri Lanka is can they get enough runs? And it's very interesting listening to you guys, uh, your thoughts on how they're going to go and who they're going to bat. Uh, and I look at that lineup and I think, you know, there's a lot of openers there guys who are best as openers. Uh, you mentioned Chandimal, uh, Kusa Pereira is an opener, but they're going to go with Nisanka and, and Mendes. Um, Avishka, he's an opener really, isn't he? By, by trade or number yeah. three. You know, he's a top order player. Um, he's I know he's batting number four now. So is there a bit of an imbalance 
there. Um, and they're all experienced. So I, I think the thing is, is can those experienced Sri Lankan batters, can they get enough runs on the board for their bowlers to defend or, or give them a chance in the game to chase down a, a target? Prad, you've, you've worked with the, a lot of this squad when you were with the team not too long ago. Um, how would they approach playing a team that feels as intimidating as this India squad does? Um, I think, tell you what, it, it, I've worked with them definitely, but I think it's going to be a whole new approach, um, you know, with Salah taking over, Aslanka's captaincy. I mean, I worked with Aslanka on his debut. I was there in the squad when he, when he made his debut, and it was against India in 2021, right? Um, and but I didn't, never really worked, you know, that on a on a decision making basis because he wasn't quite involved at that level back then. So I think it's going to be a whole new approach. It's going to be interesting to see what Aslanka's thoughts are. I mean, the little bit of work I did with him, he, he seemed quite open to it. Um, but we, you know, we we didn't really talk about decision making or strategies or anything like that. Um, but I think you know, and we've seen this before. We've seen this in the last year. If Sri Lanka to be good. We need to be smart. That's, you know, we talk about the Sri Lankan way of playing cricket. The Sri Lankan way of playing cricket is we've always been street smart. You know, we, we use, we, we've never had, um, besides Sanath and Murali and Malinga, you know, the one that, if you look at the Mahalas, the Sangakaras, these guys are orthodox, you know, straight players. Um, we've just been really clever in how we utilize it. You know, we'll think of new ways of bowling, think of new ways of batting. That's because we just try and find a smart way out. Um, and that's what we need to be. So we need to be really smart in how we approach this series. And I, I agree with that. I think they've brought India brought probably their best T20 side barring Bumrah, um, and and they've just said, you know, let's they're trying to build, and so are we, right? So if we're going to counter them, we need to be smart. I think we've got the score. We've got fine. I think we, it, they can still do some damage. Um, you know, we spoke about Amish Fernando at four. I personally think he's great at four. Um, I, I, I was with the team when we first moved him to four, and there was a lot of data and science that went into that, and, and, and I did that myself, and, and it was he, his numbers were chalk and cheese when you look at opening at four. Um, and when I spoke to Mahela about it, you know, from a creating side, Mahela straight away said, look, I, it's obvious that he likes the field spread. He feels more comfortable with the field spread. He lets him, he gets his eye in a little, he gets he has a bit of time with his eye in, and then he, get, he starts like exploding. Um, and that was the thought behind it, right? And so that's what we saw him do well again with, with Jaffna uh, in the LPL. And I think if they can stick with him at four, it'd be great. Um, if we're gonna, my only concern is with this batting. It's not the bowling. We all know we've got great bowlers. Um, is the roles these guys are going to play. I think we're just trying to fit, you know, square pegs into circular holes right now. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to mess up even the good ones. You know, um, yeah. that's my concern. So if we're going to play this squad, we've got to be really careful in how we play it. And, and my advice is we got to, I think, at least in the first game, let's keep Chandimal out. Let's keep KJP out. Let's keep them in the, in the 15, but just out of the 11. Let's play these guys in the natural roles and just see what happens, you know, and go from there. It's going to come down to how strong of a captain chariot is as well. We saw one Hindu is very strong, very vocal. Dustin uh, was not too strong, not as strong, nowhere near as strong as one a lot more quieter. And I think Charit's going to have to be a little bit in between those two. He's going to have to stand up for himself and say what he wants in, in terms of playing level, in terms of you know whatever he needs. Um, but at the same time, being able to manage the other stakeholders. Go on, Dom. Any, anything to kind of add to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think two things to, to bring up are, um, one, Sri Lanka's record against India the last since 2022. They're actually not bad. They, they're two and two. Um, they lost a series in India 2-1. Um, there yeah. was a game they also could have won in that series exactly. where, they, yeah. where they totally uh, blew the last over and they defeated them in the Asia Cup. So this is one of the things that's frustrating about Sri Lanka is that you know most teams in the world would envy a 2-2 two and two record against an India squad, but they, you know, they don't always show up. Right. I think the key for them, Mendes has played really well against India um, in those games, um, setting the table. He knows the bowlers. He knows how to go against them. What I'm curious about, especially with if Avishka does play it for how he's going to handle the spin threat in the middle. How is he going to handle Akshar Patel? How is he going to handle Ravi Bishnoi? And if he can negotiate that, right, if he can handle that and not get out early or not feel pressured and maybe Sri Lanka can think right to, to Prad's point about what roles are people going to play? Who who can we put next to Avishka in the middle so that he feels so that the pressure is off 
and he doesn't feel like he has to take down everybody, right? And this is the question of, do you use one into Hasaranga as a floater, right? Um, is Mendes still in at that point so he can maybe take on the spinners? But thinking about how do we actually make the most of the guys who are there? And I agree with Prad that uh, my top four would be Kusal, Potham, Kamindu, and Avishka. And you back them to do what they've been doing consistently, right? And and it seems like, um, based off of Sanat's press conference, that they're going to uh, go with a 6-5 combo and play three pacers and two spinners. So that should be very interesting. And that'll put more a little bit more pressure on the batting lineup to score runs. They can't expect lower order um, runs to support them. One last thing, and maybe maybe Matt can uh, jump in on this. Apparently, um, Sanath had, had mentioned that Rajasthan Royals high performance director, Zubin Barucha, had come to help the Sri Lankan batters prepare for the series against India. And I'm kind of curious what kind of impact that may or may not have, um, what kind of things he might be bringing up. And sorry, one more question for Matt, because I've been thinking about this. Abhishek Sharma was dropped. I was really surprised mm-hmm. by that after scoring 100. Any thoughts on why Sharma was dropped and what the impact of bringing in some IPL energy might be? Yeah, so I, uh, the Zubin Barucha, I don't know huge about him. I, want, I don't know what kind of work he was doing over there. It's obviously a Sangha connection, isn't it, mm. with, with the Rajasthan Royals. Uh, I think it's quite a smart move because Rajasthan Royals, you, you mentioned there, Brad, about Sri Lanka being known for being a smart team, making good decisions. Your Rajasthan role is a little bit similar, I think, in the way they've played of late. You know, they're a smart IPL franchise, so maybe it's brought some interesting ideas over. Uh, the Abhishek Sharma thing was a bit of a surprise, I would say. I mean, he came into the side in Zimbabwe, got that incredible 40-something ball, 100. I think it was the fourth fastest 100 by an Indian in T20 internationals. We saw what he did in the IPL, mm-hmm. just him and Travis Head, kind of rewrote what you do in the first six mm-hmm. overs. It was insane what happened in the first six overs of a Sunrisers innings. So he obviously was going to come into the side. Um, but it was interesting when Jaiswal arrived, because he had a bit of a, a, a break, he came in and immediately went into the opening position with Gil and they dropped Abhishek down to three, which is maybe not quite his strength. You know, he, he showed that the power play is very much his strength and apart from the 100 he he didn't really get any other runs so I thought they would have taken him as a a spare batter but if you look at the squad you know they're they're kind of stacked really at the top of the order you know they're going to go most certainly I would say with Jaiswal, Gill, Pant I think will carry on at three you know that worked at the World Cup almost by luck rather than by design. (laughs) Sky will be number four and then so unless you're going to bring Abhishek in you know at number five or something like that but then you've you know you've got Hardik Shivam Dube did a decent job there as well Rinku Singh who I think actually personally might be the more long-term solution at number five but because he doesn't bowl they might need to have Dube there who can give you an over or two Abhishek bowls as well right he bowls left arm spin so maybe in the future they might think they can try and fit him in at number five and turn him into a bit of a power hitter. That's a way of getting him in. But with Jaiswal and Gill there, you know, his opportunities are probably going to be limited. Gaikwad, by the way, is the other one who's probably a bit unlucky. He played well in Zimbabwe. So, you know, if you take Gaikwad and you take Abhishek, I mean, it's almost like you look at the Sri Lankan batting lineup and, and you've got all these openers, as you say, square pegs into round holes, and you try and fit them in the top four. You know, India could do that. They did that in Zimbabwe. They could they could say, okay, we're going to go with all the youngsters. We'll go Jaiswal, uh, Abhishek Open, Gil three, and Gaikwad at four. But it just seems a bit imbalanced, you know, yeah. something like that. Um, so, yeah, I think both those guys are unlucky, Gaikwad and, and Abhishek, but it's not the last you've heard of them, that's for sure. It's just such an embarrassment of riches they have, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> yeah. like the, the, those two players, there's no other squad in the world that they're not getting into. At this yeah. point, right? Yeah. Um, England will bite your hand off for one of those guys. I, I was going to say, uh, yeah, I think uh, Abhishek Sharma has a great great grandfather who lived in Sri Lanka, right? I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think like like Matt, they, he's got a great great grandfather who once uh, was in transit in Colombo, which surely at this point is enough. <laughs> like, get him in, make it make him a Sri Lankan, right? 
Um, it just re uh, reminder, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. Um, I think Matt might need to leave us at some point soon. Um, and that's fine, Matt. We can, we can keep chatting to you, I'm sure. Uh, you might be able to find a few minutes somewhere uh, when, you, when you're when over in, in Colombo to, talk, to come back and talk to us. Give us some insight from the grand. I'm sure you'll get all the great gossip. Um, and enjoy, enjoy the food and enjoy um, the sights and sounds of the whole island. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm super envious of you being able to go there. And I think this is a, this is a great time to go there as well. Um, in terms of weather, but it's always a good time to go there. Prad's just got back. Oh, Prad's there as well. Maybe yeah, the two of you yeah. can have a drink together. Hundred percent. I'll be at the game. I won't be at the T 20s but I'll be at the one day. So. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Yeah, Prad, well, let's meet up, mate. Uh, you know, you can Definitely. show me around Colombo. Show me where to go in the evenings. <laughs> mate, I, think, uh, best, I don't know where exactly where to take you. <laughs> oh, perfect! Great, great. I'm looking forward to that. It can be actually. I don't know that well because I've only been there um, briefly in the the. 2012 T20 World Cup. Colombo, I know a little bit, but but even then, not that well. I've, I've already been tapping up Fabis Maharouf because I know him from <laughs> the Middlesex League here. I used to play against him when he was at Stanmore and I was at Hampstead. And uh, he's promised me he's going to he's going to help me out with, with some, some stuff as well. So maybe the three of us can go out and have a drink and some food. The, the, um, the impression I get is that it's quite cordial with the uh, broadcast teams afterwards, right? Everyone. Whoever the local is always kind of fixes everything up to go uh, for, for the evening activities, the apre cricket, right? Is, is that fair <laughs> yeah. to say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the Sri Lankan guys are very good hosts. I remember last time Favis was great. Uh, Russell is really, really friendly. Uh, I remember because we were in lockdown, we couldn't leave the hotel. So they, they both sorted out a whole load of uh, you know, beers to be delivered. And they even got some sushi brought in from somewhere else. They were brilliant. Uh, Roshan as well is a, is a lovely guy. So, yeah, we, we all get pretty well. And I think also they're bringing over, it's a young Indian broadcast team, uh, younger than the normal, you'd say, you know, Robin Uttapa and uh, Abhinav Mukun. So we've got quite a nice mm. young group. I think we're going to get on off uh, the field as well. It's going to be good fun. Although we haven't got many days off, you know. I'll be there pretty much to work and then do a few podcast things. But I'm going to try and get out about have a look around, particularly Candy, because Candy I don't know that well. So I, we get a day off, I think, after the first two T20s. So I'm going to have a little wander around Candy if I can. And any any recommendations, guys? Let me know. The, the three things you got to do is obviously you got to go to the temple. That's where the uh, the a Buddhist tooth relic is. That's probably the most important thing. Then the other two things I would recommend, if you can do them, is do the um, the botanical gardens. Um, there's loads of great stuff to see there. I think there's a cricket pitch in there as well. I could, I, maybe I've just made that up. Um, and also, if you can, the Elephant Orphanage. When you're on your way up or down from Candy, you might be able to stop off at the Elephant Orphanage. Um, I mean, it's just I don't need to tell you any anything else beyond it's an Elephant Orphanage. Like for me, that that'd be enough reason to go to to go there, right? Yeah, that's all you need to say, mate. Elephant Orphanage, I'm there. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, we'll get back to discussing the, the kind of cricket now. Um, we are, from a Sri Lankan perspective, we, we're a little bit right. They might not go with the kind of 6-5 bowling split, right? Um, they might revert back to old because for me it makes no sense that they pick Chandamal and KJP, kind of two elder statements of Sri Lankan cricket, and then you don't give them a, a run out. Are they going to make this mistake, Prad? Is that what the thinking is going to end up being? Um, look, I mean, you got to take them for their word, right? So, I mean, we, we heard the chief selector and Salat come out today in the press conference and say they're going to play um, three paces plus Dasun, so four, and then you've got Wani and Mahesh. So, you've got your six bowlers there or five bowlers with Dasun. So, you're looking at, all right, we've got six batters. They've said Dasun's going to fit in. That's leaves five spots and they've said Patum and Kusama is open so and you've got turret right so you're competing for uh, what is it two spots um, between coming through Chandimal and KJP um, which and means and Avishka as well and Avishka Jesus Christ I don't know how we're going to so, build so, them in right so <laughs> the whole thing with this selection committee is they're meant to have picked some form right so, yeah. which is what their justification is for uh, Chad Dumal and KJP being back in, which means that, using that thinking, Avishka's almost definitely got to start, right? Because yeah, well, he's the form player in the LPL. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, look, I, I think Kaminda is going to make way. I'll be honest. I, I, it's not what I want, but I think Kaminda is going to make way. Um, I think Abishka will play at four tries at five, and one of Chandimala KJP will play at three, uh, and then one will make way as well. I think that's what they're going to end up doing for the first T20. Uh, Dom, Willala Gay is yet to make his debut in T20 cricket, even though he's been in a number of squads. I feel for about five years. This was he's he's still only about nineteen as well. Um, are we? Is he going to debut this this series? You know, this is another question, right? Uh, I think in terms of thinking about combinations, it depends what the pitches bring. Um, we all remember what uh, Willala Gay did. Um, in the 2023 Asia Cup against India, right? And that's a good, favorable matchup. You have a less right-hand heavy dominant um, Indian top order now, but there's sort of a historical weakness against um, left arm spin. I think it's pretty hard at this point for him to crack the 11 because you're not going to drop Mahesh. You're not going to drop Wanindu. Um, and unless it's a place where you really want to play you know, three spinners, right? I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. And on top of that, you also have Kamindu who can, who can um, bowl left arm spin in a pinch. And it's one of those situations where it says something good about Sri Lankan cricket in that we do have the talent such that someone as talented and as gifted as Duneth uh, might not make his debut for a little while. But it's also frustrating, right, because we know that slow left arm bowlers are extremely valuable, especially against aggressive right hand batters. Right. Um, And I'm curious to see when he gets that debut. His skill set is upping slowly. He's he's upped his pace. So he has this great pace variation between, you know, 80 kph and and 95 plus. Um, And he's looked really good. He can bowl in the power play. He can bowl in the middle overs. So he's developing a good skill set. I think one. Other bit is um, where he fits in as a batter because he is an all rounder, but he's not, you know, a power hitting all rounder. I think he's someone you'd want to play in the top order if you were playing him. But as you saw, we have a log jam for top order batters. And I don't think, um, unless he puts on a lot of muscle and develops his power hitting, batting him at eight or nine is something that we want to do. Uh, Matt, how do you think India will be preparing for facing eight overs of sling, slingy action? Bowling. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah, good question. Uh, low arm dog throwing, maybe. Um, get Malinga to come and help them warm up. <laughs> Do you know what, right? There if there was one, if there was, options. if there was one Shrunka player that I would say would never go and work with another team if they were prepared to play Sri Lanka, I'd say it'd be Malinga. Malinga is such a divisive character in Sri Lanka, right? Um, but I, I, he's so such a patriot. I don't think he'd do it. Um, but obviously, you know, a lot of these players would, would have faced people like that in the nets, I'd imagine. Right, I've got a, a solution then to that. You give Zaman Khan a call, <laughs> Pakistani. The problem is that he won't be allowed into India, so maybe he can come and meet them in Sri Lanka beforehand and get him to bowl at the batters. But yeah, listen, it's a good point because very hard to prepare for that until you get out there in the middle. Mm. And Malinga, anyone facing Malinga found that out to their peril quite often because you get up there and you haven't got six balls to, to adjust. You know, he can get you out in the first mm. few deliveries. So I think some of them would have played. Obviously, Paterana played in the IPL. So I think a few of them will have faced mm. Paterana. Uh, Tishara, maybe less so. It'll be interesting to see. I love watching bowlers with a slightly unorthodox style because you can just see the way the batters are thinking, you know, how do I get around this, maybe take a couple of balls and then someone will come up with a solution, you know, each batter is different someone will come up with a solution and will take down one of those guys, will try to take them down it'll be then up to the bowler to then change, but listen, I think I think Sri Lanka will win one of the games of the three I really do. I think Sri Lanka at home, I think that that bowling attack, you know, there might be a slight hangover from India after the T20 World Cup. I know they've got a, a new coach, a new captain, so that will spur them on. But I wouldn't be surprised if Sri Lanka managed to. They've just got to get enough runs. I mean, power hitting could be a big difference between the two sides as well. Yeah, I know you guys know, but Sri Lanka power hitting has been an issue for a while, hasn't it? And you know, without someone like a Tisara Pereira there, 
he's long gone, I know, but uh, it feels it's, like that role has never been sorted out. So, so, so my my take of the power hitting thing is is that they basically they've there's about th there's three batters who they've really backed the last few years, which is Patrick Masanka, Kusil Mendes, and Asalanka, right? And we, I feel like we've kind of seen them come in, adjust to international cricket, and slowly kind of over over months and months and series upon series, they've started to become the kind of power hitters that that we need them to be the kind of big question mark remains though is can they go into a series against a serious cricketing nation like india and power hit for three consecutive games as as a unit because i think we've seen you know kusul mendes and patam have both had moments of off power hitting against india but they've been kind of not not been able to string a string of running performances together that's why i think actually for those for definitely Maybe not Aslan because his role is slightly different, but definitely for Shrunk's two openers, I think this is a massive series, right? Because a lot of people are starting to talk about Patham and Kussel. I think the thing that really gets them over to the next level is they need to go and expose themselves playing in different leagues with different coaches. This is such a shot window for those two players, right? You know they're definitely going to bat because they're at the top of the order. Um, and and it's India, right? If you want to get to the IPL, the easiest way to do it is to, to, to get a fixture against India and then go big. Um, Patton's had an absolutely incredible, what, seven or eight months running into this um, series. He's pretty much the only shrunken batter that comes out of the World Cup with any respect. Um, so if, if this could be his moment, I mean, I'm not a gambling person, but if I was, he might be the player to put a bit of money on to feel kind of player of the series because he'll be absolutely relishing this task. And also, he's got to the stage just about there now where no one questions his position in the team um, yeah. as well. What do, you, what do you think about that, Prad? Because you've always been looking at the kind of data of, on yeah. those three players in particular for quite a while now. Yeah. Um, no, I think you, you spot on that. And, and I think, you know, patham has been probably our best limited overs batter now for the last, like, or at least when I say best, I mean the most consistent, you know, um, for the last at least, what, 18 months, 18, 24 months, even if we're going back that far. Um, Mendis has probably been our second best as well. We've seen him perform as well really well in T20s. He's not as, as much consistent in the one days, but he's been quite good in T20s. Um, and, you know, when those two click, and if even if you go back to that 2022 Asia Cup when we took down India, when they scored 170, I'm not sure if you remember, it was their opening partnership of those two that just took these guys on. Um, there was there was no fear. They just kind of went down. Um, and, and I remember, you know, what... what um, Chris Silver, the coach at the time, in the huddle, you know, what he said in the huddle, he said something that sticks with me to this day. And he goes, you know, you're not going to get many times in your life where you're going to get a chance to knock India out of the tournament. Here's your chance. Um, and the boys kind of lift over that. They say, oh, here we go. We, we've got something here. Um, and and I think Patham and, and, and then it's that, they, they whatever you get through them, they just kept, you know, they took him to town. They're going at eights, nines in that yeah. over for the first yeah. 10. Um, and just changed the game, right? Um, in, in talking about the power hitters, you know, and I think that's why Chandamal and KJP have been brought in. So let's not forget that, right? We, we talk about, uh, hey, they've been brought in for this experience, yes, but their role is because Chandamal had a great season in LPL being a power hitter. So if he comes in and starts changing his game and tries to, you know, play to fight third man and find leg and look for ones and twos, what are we doing? You know, if I was Sanat, I'd be pulling in and saying, man, what are you doing? That's not what we brought you here for, right? Same with KJP. They've been brought in to be power hitters. Um, you, you look at the likes of Dustin as well, a bit inconsistent. He's got to he's got to deliver one of those three. Uh, Banu has just missed out. Banu Karan Paksa, another great power hitter, just missed out. So I think we've got the talent there. Just it's a little inconsistent. Um, and I think when we've done well, it's because we've had out of the six batters, you've got at least three that have yeah. got us off to a start, right? Um, but for us to do that, we need six batters who can score at your 130, 140 strike rate. There's no point having your 100, 110, 120 strike rate players. Um, so you need six guys who can score that 140, and then you just back them, and you hope three click, and you win. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, I mean, not as simple as that, but it's as close to as simple as that is gonna, it's going to be. Um, so I think it's going to be interesting to see how Chandamal and, and KJP bring their game. Um, and if they do stick to their power hitting game, that's that's going to be key. Let's see what happens. 
Um, guys, should we wrap it up there? I'll just before I do that. I mean, Matt said he reckons Sri Lanka only only going to win one game. Um, should I get predictions from Dom and Prad? Um, Dom, you can go first. What you think is going to happen? Then, then Prad, then um, we'll call yeah. it a day after that. Yeah, um, I think I agree with Matt. I think the the Sri Lankan bowling lineup will deliver at least one sort of majestic performance that'll lead them to a victory. Um, if the batting clicks, I could see them getting to, but I think it's dependent on what uh, Prad said, right? Is that um, having that clarity of role and saying, okay, we know how one and two are going to play, but how are three and four going to play? And if they can bring that uh, high scoring power hitting energy, then they have a chance to win more than one game. And I think that that's, to me, the decider is how that three and four pair clicks. Um, of course, it could be like the 2022 Asia Cup where Kusal and, and, and Potham just have a heater and, and bat the other team out of the game and you get to win that way. But uh, I say one, but there's a possi- I see a possibility of winning two as well. Prad, what are your predictions? Uh, look, my, my heart saying Sri Lanka 2-1. Um, and, you know, that's, that's what my heart's saying. But I think my head's going with what Matt said. Um, and, you know, of late, Sri Lanka has been a dead rubber specialist, haven't we? We lose the series <laughs> in the two, and then we come back hard in the third. So um, I think my head's saying we're going to lose the first two, and we're going to win the third. Matt, do you, do you want to elaborate more on your prediction? Um, no, you know what? That makes sense what Brad says. They're, they're going to annihilate India in the third game. Like, absolutely obliterate. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, no, I, I do think it's going to be it's interesting we've all gone with 2-1 either way because I, I do think it's going to be closer than people think. You know, India, great, great side, world champions. But start of a new era, we don't quite know what we're going to get. New captain, let's just see. I, I think this Sri Lankan bowling attack can definitely keep them in most games. And it's a question of whether they get the, the whole package. I think they'll do it for, for one game, uh, possibly, maybe more. But, yeah, I'm going to go 2-1 India because I just think that, you know, India just has a bit too much firepower. You know, the likes of, of Jaiswal coming back in, Surya Kumar himself, you know, Dubey with the power, Rinku with the power down the order, and then the, the bowling attack as well. But I think it's going to be close. I think the games will be close. I think it's going to be a really good series. Um, I'm going to go with 2-1 to Sri Lanka because I think we're going to win the first two and then we'll let India have the third one. So <laughs> too sad. We're very hospitable people. That's what we are. Uh, guys, let's leave it there. If you've got to the end of this show, please hit the subscribe. Please hit the follow. Leave us comments, likes. Tell all your friends about the Murali End. We'll be back through the series. We'll also have an update with Estelle from the Asia Cup at some point as well. The girls doing really well there at the moment. So hopefully they can get to themselves to another final. And then this is Shrunker Cricket. Absolutely anything can happen. Thanks for listening or watching. Bye. <laughs>